Duntullum is a small township on the north coast of Trottenish, on the Isle of Skye. Beyond the hamlet of Duntullum stands the fragmented remains of Duntullum Castle, perched magnificently on a rocky headland and guarded by three sides of steep basalt cliffs. The castle commands a great defensive position, looking out across the Minch to the Isle of Lewis in the distance. The area was first fortified in the Iron Age and later by the Norse due to its strong position, but the current castle was first built in the 14th or 15th century, probably by the MacLeod clan, but much of the remains are from the 17th century. A well-defined path leads to the castle where visitors are warned by a sign that the castle is structurally unsafe and one should not proceed past the castle fence line, but if you do so, you do so at your own risk. The first thing that greets you just after the fence is a cairn which celebrates the MacArthurs, who were the McDonald's Pipers. The highest part of the castle is the keep, which in 1880 was recorded as being several stories high. This postcard from 1880 shows how much higher the keep was than it is today. The last century has seen the castle collapse and crumble considerably, and much of the stonework repurposed for local buildings. Throughout the 13th and 14th centuries, the Earls of Ross and the Lords of the Isles fought for control of the Trottenish area, and the struggle for power continued in the late medieval period between the MacLeods and the MacDonalds of Sleet. Initially, the MacLeods were stronger, and the earliest recorded account of Duntullum Castle is from 1540, when King James V visited here when the castle was under the control of the MacLeods. Duntullum Castle is thought to be haunted by at least four ghosts. The first ghost to mention is that of Margaret MacLeod, sister of Roderick Moore, chief of Clan MacLeod, who was hand-fasted to Donald Gorm Moore MacDonald, the seventh MacDonald clan chief, in a bid to calm relations between the MacLeods and the MacDonalds. But after a year of not bearing a child and losing an eye, she was sent back to MacLeod of Dunvegan in 1600 on a one-eyed horse with a one-eyed servant and a one-eyed dog. This act was the match that lit the fuse of the ferocious wars of the one-eyed woman. During these wars, Donald Gorm Moore invaded Trottenish, which was at that time still in the hands of the MacLeods. And it was at the Battle of Troutenes, on the banks of the river Snizort, which bordered the territories of the two clans, where the victorious Donald Gorm Moore cut off the heads of the fallen MacLeods and threw them in the river. After this battle, Donald Gorm Moore moved into Duntullum Castle, but his thirst for killing had not ended. The wars of the one-eyed woman culminated in a battle at Kwana Krish, where the famous fairy pools are at the bottom of the Black Coolins, where in 1601 the MacDonalds defeated the MacLeods, but at heavy cost, with both clans losing many men. This was to be the last battle in Skye, as the Privy Council intervened, and with a shifting of power, they awarded Duntullum Castle to the MacDonalds of Sleet in 1618, 17 years after the Wars of the One-Eyed Woman ended, on the condition that improvements were made to the castle. Also in 1601, a plot was hatched to overthrow Donald Gorm Moore by his cousin, Hugh MacDonald. After mixing up letters, one, an invitation to Donald Gorm Moore to a drinking party where he was to be murdered, and a second to the hired assassin, the clan chief became aware of the plot and Hugh MacDonald was captured and starved to death in the dungeon at Dumtullum Castle, being left there with only a plate of salty beef and an empty water jug to torment him further. Before he died, he went completely mad after trying to eat his own hands. Hugh MacDonald is the second ghost to mention who haunts the castle's remains. Donald Gorm Moore MacDonald died around 1616, bearing no children, and was succeeded by his nephew, Donald Gorm Og MacDonald, the eighth MacDonald clan chief of Sleet. 
Donald Gorm Og loved to fight, and after his death in 1643, his is the third ghost that is set to haunt the remains of the castle, fighting off other ghosts, fighting in death as he loved to fight when alive. James Moore MacDonald, the eldest son of Donald Gorm Og, succeeded his father and became the ninth clan chief of the MacDonalds of Sleet. And in 1650, improvements were made to the castle with a tower being added, which sadly collapsed into the sea as late as 1990. After the MacDonalds had taken legal control of the castle in 1618, there followed more than 100 years of more stable times until the MacDonalds vacated the castle in 1732, taking much of the stone with them to build a new residence at the nearby Monkstadt House. It is thought that the MacDonalds vacated Duntulum Castle after a nursemaid accidentally dropped a baby of a clan chief from a castle window above the cliffs. The clan chief at this time was Sir Alexander MacDonald. The nursemaid was subsequently set adrift at sea in an old leaky boat and was never seen again. Hers is the fourth ghost that is said to wander the grounds of the castle, along with the ghost of Hugh MacDonald, Donald Gorm Og, and Margaret MacLeod, the one-eyed woman. Their wails can be heard echoing around the cliffs on cold, bleak nights. Sir Alexander MacDonald of Sleet was a staunch supporter of King George II, but his wife Margaret's loyalties were on the opposite side with Bonnie Prince Charlie. Margaret's niece, Flora MacDonald, was brought up by Sir Alexander MacDonald after her father died soon after her birth, and it was she who led Bonnie Prince Charlie to safety in her boat after his defeat at the Battle of Culloden, with the prince disguised as her handmaiden, which ultimately allowed the Bonnie Prince Charlie to flee to safety, sailing to France, and immortalised her in Scottish history. Duntulum Castle is not the most grand castle you will ever see, nor is it the most complete. 
In fact, very little of it remains today. But its dark, mysterious beauty still makes it well worth a visit. And I highly recommend you do so before any more of it falls into the sea.